But imagine a life where you never worried about the price of gas and instead use that time and money on more important things like, I don't know, literally anything else. For me, it's been over five years since I bought gas, but in terms of average annual mileage, it's actually more like 10 years. And in this video, I'll explain why that is and I'll reveal how much it's actually cost to charge my Tesla Model 3 along with how much money and other things that I've saved by not buying gas. Now here's why this is a big deal. One of the most popular and most frustrating comments from EV skeptics that I get on my Tesla videos is always something like, sure, the fuel savings are great, but your battery will only last 10 years. Well, my 2018 Tesla Model 3 just surpassed 136,000 miles, and that is an important milestone because the average driver in the US drives 13,500 miles per year, so that means I've traveled the equivalent of 10 years of driving for the typical vehicle owner. According to a study from automotive research firm iccars.com, the average length of car ownership for the top 10 best-selling models ranges from 9.7 to 11.4 years. So essentially, this means my total charging cost up to this point in time can be a good estimate of what someone could expect to pay over the average lifetime ownership of an electric vehicle. And 10 years has always been my goal of driving my Model 3 until I upgrade to a newer car. First, let me quickly explain all the little benefits of not buying gas over the last five years that might not be that obvious, but add up to be quite the perk. Now, it's ironic that one of the biggest reasons that make people afraid to buy an electric vehicle is the transition to charging instead of filling up at the pump, when in reality, charging is possibly the best part about owning an EV. Charging my car at home is like if a gas car owner had their own fuel pump in their garage that pumped gas at a fraction of the price of the gas station down the street. Now with an EV, you basically wake up to a quote unquote full tank every morning, which is awesome. And yes, charging on a road trip does take a bit longer than filling up at a gas station, but the vast majority of my charging is done at home while I'm sleeping. That means I never have to stop and charge during my normal daily driving. When I owned a gas car, I was stopping for gas at least twice per week. So not only am I saving money, but I'm saving time. And those five minute gas station stops quickly add up to a lot of time wasted. Plus not stopping at gas stations during my commute sometimes helps me avoid worse traffic or avoid being late. Another thing is that avoiding gas stations has been much healthier for me. I don't think anyone has ever visited a gas station and walked out with healthy food. Gas stations are traps for unhealthy snacks and frivolous spending. They make it easy to fall victim to all the junk food and don't even get me started on how gross those gas pump handles are. I know I'm being a bit dramatic, but these are all things that I endured for years to the point where I got so fed up with gas that I spent way more money than I ever thought I'd spend on a car when I got my Tesla Model 3 in 2018. So there are a ton of benefits to avoiding gas stations. But on the other hand, some of the best life advice I've ever gotten is to not skimp on things that separate you from the ground, which means invest in high quality shoes, tires, and mattresses. And thanks to today's sponsor, Birch, I've been sleeping on their Lux Natural mattress for over three months now, and I have to say, it's the only mattress that my wife and I can agree on that gives us both a great night's sleep. Before getting the Birch, we had an all foam mattress that used to leave my wife waking up with horrible back pain, but with the Birch mattress, we both wake up feeling great every morning. It's not only comfortable, but breathable. And most importantly, Birch makes all their mattresses with organic and natural materials that are sustainably sourced. Knowing that we spend one third of our lives on a mattress, we feel much better knowing that this mattress is environmentally friendly and free from polyurethane foams and fiberglass, which can be harmful to your health. Birch Natural Mattress was also just awarded the best mattress of 2023 by US News out of over 340 mattresses and hours of in-person expert testing. And for little ones, they have the Birch Kids Natural Mattress, which is a 2023 Good Housekeeping Parenting Awards winner. The Lux mattress that we have consists of eight layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex that relieves pressure points. And with a Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial plus 25 year warranty, and it gets delivered directly to your door for free within the US. We love our Birch mattress and think you will too. Their Black Friday sale is officially running, so it's the perfect time to upgrade your sleep with 25% off a Birch mattress plus two free Eco Rest pillows. Visit birchliving.com/andysly to find out more about this limited time offer.
Now, let's get to my favorite part of drilling down into the numbers to calculate my total cost to travel the equivalent of 10 years of average driving in my Tesla Model 3 and compare it to what it would have cost in a comparable gas car. Now, it may have sounded like all sunshine and rainbows so far in this video when talking about going from a gas car to an electric vehicle, but one of the few downsides of an EV is the additional cost of adding a home charger. However, there are still some big myths about home chargers. Many EV owners can actually get by with just charging their car on a normal outlet if they have access to one, such as in their garage, and if their daily driving is around 50 miles or less. So there's really no need for them to pay for an EV home charger in that case. However, I drive much more than the average driver, so I need to charge my car faster than what a normal outlet provides. So after receiving a 30% tax credit, I ended up paying $940 for an electrician to install an EV charger in my garage, which falls within the average cost of an EV home charger installation. So that's $1,000 right off the bat, but trust me, it gets better from here. To calculate how much the electricity has cost to charge my car, we first must split the charging into two categories home charging, and travel charging. Now, the only time I pay for travel charging is, of course, when I charge at Tesla superchargers when I'm on a road trip. Now, I take maybe one to two trips per year, so I'm going to estimate that 2,000 miles per year are considered travel charging. And when it comes to travel charging, though, a cool benefit of buying a Tesla is that there are many ways to get free supercharging credits, either by referring people to buy Teslas or buying a Tesla with someone's referral code. But even though I've had free supercharging for pretty much the entire ownership of my Tesla so far, I'm going to calculate it as if I had to pay for supercharging. But also keep in mind, many of the hotels and Airbnbs I stay at provide free EV charging. And on top of that, the first 300 miles of any road trip is still considered home charging because I leave my house with a full battery. Now this brings my average annual supercharger miles to about 1,500 or 7,500 miles over the past five years. Now that means 94% of my charging is home charging and 6% is travel charging. Now my Tesla keeps track of the total amount of electricity that it's consumed, which is currently 34,326 kilowatt hours. But another minor downside of an EV is not all the electricity that comes from the grid makes it into the actual moving of the wheels. Now this is called wall to wheels efficiency. And according to data from Teslafy, a Tesla vehicle that charges mostly on a level two charger is about 94% efficient. But we also have to account for phantom drain, which is when the car is sitting somewhere unplugged, which my car does about 18 hours out of the day. According to my Tesla stats app, phantom drain is about 2%. So in reality, the total kilowatt hours my car has used so far is about 37,310 kilowatt hours. That means 35,071 kilowatt hours has been home charging and 2,239 kilowatt hours has been travel charging. And to estimate the total travel charging cost, I'll times that energy by the cost of charging at my nearest supercharger, which is currently 37 cents per kilowatt hour. And that comes to a total travel charging cost of $828. Now let's calculate my home charging. Now my local off-peak electricity rate when my car charges overnight costs just eight cents per kilowatt hour, which is almost five times cheaper than charging at a supercharger. If we times that by 35,071, that comes to a total home charging cost of $2,805. Now adding both home charging and travel charging comes to a total estimated charging cost of $3,633. And if we add my EV charger cost, that's a grand total of $4,573. Now, if we compare that to the fastest Toyota Camry model from the same year, which averages 26 miles per gallon, the total gas cost to travel 136,000 miles at an average gas price of $3 per gallon would be $15,692. That's $11,000 I've saved so far by not buying gas. And maybe best of all, my battery health is still at 95% and is still going strong after all these miles. So if I indeed hit my goal of 10 years of ownership, that could be $22,000 in gas savings alone, which is incredible. As you can see, I'm very passionate about ditching gas for electric. Not only does it save you time and money, but you're getting a much quicker and quieter car. Now, to top it all off, if you purchase a Model 3 before the end of the year and qualify for the full tax credit, the cost is only about $33,000. To put it simply, not buying gas has been one of the best improvements of my life so far. So what do you think? Are you team electric 
or are you still team gas? Let me know in the comments below and you better have a good reason why if you're a gas supporter. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. My name is Andy. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Tesla and tech videos in the future, make sure you subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you in the next one.